Caddis Maximus here, this time with a review of the Milwaukee 2504 second generation 12 volt M12 brushless fuel half inch hammer drill. It's a little heavy for cats at 2.7 pounds, um, but it definitely has quite a bit of power. Two speed, 450 RPM and 1700 RPM. Uh, I don't like the way the manufacturers are chasing RPMs. That's like the new war that they're waging. I prefer this that'd be like 350 RPM and low gear. That way it would have been a re you know all the power that you need, and maybe 1200 RPM or 1500 in the high gear. I am going to do a little bit of comparing against the Dewalt. The Dewalt's a little bit cheaper of a tool, and they were trying. Dewalt's always been a little more anemic with their uh, 12 volt line, so this is definitely a lot more powerful than the Dewalt. There's a huge lineup of tools that Milwaukee has. They have six amp batteries, 72 watt hour batteries. The big issue here is the ergonomics. Just a lot, of the, almost all the ergonomics just. Uh, are not very good and it's really unfortunate. I really like to have basically the power of this drill in the ergonomics of the DeWalt. That's the uh, point of this review essentially. As far as price, I got it on one of these special sales as I did with the DeWalt set. I got it as this whole pack out 12, uh, fuel 12 volt set with two 2 amp batteries and it was $179 for that whole set. So that was definitely a pretty good deal on those. The deal I ended up getting at on these DeWalt Extreme Subcompacts was $199. Uh, that was at Lowe's. They actually had a two-piece set with two batteries and a, just a regular bag. It was like $150 or $160. I paid $200 and I was able to get the impact wrench to drill and four batteries as well as two bags and two chargers. And I think they're DeWalt and Milwaukee have targeted these you know, just about perfectly. The amount of performance difference and the additional pro you know product line that you get into with the Milwaukee, uh, you're paying just a bit more money. Even with the two amp batteries at, in first gear at 450 RPM, uh, this will really twist you around. It's surprising. If you're anybody who's watching who still has like a 12 volt NICAD based or nickel metal hydride based cordless drill, uh, this little thing will be more powerful than that. Excuse me, excuse that error. This will be more as, as almost as powerful as any uh, 18 volt old NICAD drill. As far as this comparing to old 12 volt drills, this thing is, you know, ridiculous. It really will. You do need two hands, and I'll do some drilling demonstrations. And really, I'll show how this thing is just an explosion of power for a little one handed drill. It does use an electronic clutch, which works differently from the DeWalt, which does have a traditional ball bearing uh, mechanical clutch. A mechanical clutch works in the front of the drill, just behind the truck, so uh, after the gearbox. And they're always pretty consistent and really pretty easy to use. Whether you're in high or low gear, you always get the same torque. Electronic clutches are different because it's basing it on the amount of power that the motor is using. It does give you a distinct advantage. This clutch has 16 settings plus the drill mode and then the hammer drill mode. But when you go into second gear, since it's electronic and based off the load, that creates a ratio. So say you're in clutch setting one in first gear would be the same as clutch setting three in second gear. But since it's a ratio, if you're in five and one, it would be like 15 or 16 in second gear. But it ends up giving you a lot of granularity, essentially 32 different clutch settings. Issues is because it has everything gets ramped up and is uh, when you're going full speed, uh, you have the inertia of the heavy half inch chuck and all the inertia of the steel gears. And for like really fine cabinet screws, you can't just go full speed and then just have the clutch give out like on a traditional one. Uh, it may strip out or over tighten those, so you actually have to drive them really slow so that doesn't happen. And there's, you know, there's situations where uh, people have definitely had those types of issues and one of the criticisms, but I'll make a video focusing on that. What's also interesting is the non-hammer drill and hammer drill version are the same size in the Milwaukee. Where in the DeWalt, this is the non-hammer drill version, but the hammer drill is longer on the DeWalt and they'd be both the same length. What I did find interesting is, at least with the standard 2 amp battery, that the Milwaukee is actually shorter than the DeWalt. But I think DeWalt sacrifices a little bit more height just to really uh, get premium ergonomics. The Milwaukee is pretty nice because it, this is 
this front ring is just simulated, you know, it's painted plastic, but this is actually a metal gearbox diaphragm here where it is just plastic on the DeWalt. In the teardown, I'll mention it, but I'd for a drill that this is this powerful, um, really not the best ventilation. We'll give it a run. But it just doesn't blow quite as much air. The DeWalt is less powerful, but it has just a ton of ventilation and it makes more sense. It's just pulling it from the back of the motor through the windings and then right out where this it has to pull in from the front of the trigger and it goes through this whole convoluted path to go through the windings and then out these holes. So I really worry about long-term, you know, clogging with sawdust because <laughs> these two little holes on each side of this drill are the air intakes for both the controller and the motor. Part of the issue with the ergonomics and like the big lump right here is because since they're using a vertical battery. Uh, the control board is the circuit board that's just like right along here. And uh, it, this, the even Makita, Makita's ones who started this vertical battery trend, them are Bosch. And then even Makita gave up and went to slide batteries uh, or horizontal batteries. And uh, Milwaukee stuck with those and they really shouldn't have. They really should have gone with slide batteries. It also means the belt hook is up high versus being down low. Uh, and this actually has enough power in first gear uh, that you really want to grab onto it. And then the belt clip does kind of bite into your hand. The other issue is, is whenever you're grabbing onto the top of it, what are you doing? You're just completely covering all the vents. But this has so much power, your only other option is to really grab a hold of the battery. And I think that's what I'm going to do this time. Because I did a Hercules uh, auger bit test a few videos previous. And then this drill, I drilled... Uh, a few holes right to where it's stalling out, and uh, it got pretty hot. The other thing I'll mention is that the gearbox, the shift lever, is super easy to hit, a little too easy, and that's a criticism. It just sticks out there. It's blowing in the wind. If it falls and drops on the top, it's impacting straight on top of the gear change lever itself. The detent feels, it's pretty solid, but it feels a little plasticky. And the other issue I see is, you know, when this is getting used that on wood stacks or even being put in tool belts and such, that this switch will, is really easily knocked around. It'll get knocked, particularly from second gear back into first gear, and first gear or even in between. I'm really surprised Milwaukee's still doing that. Uh, DeWalt sacrificed a little hype because they knew that, you know, they've learned from <laughs> a lot of lessons and feedback. So they've just, they made their switch. It may not be the easiest to hit. But it's well recessed. You're not going to get uh, accidentally hit it. That's what I'm trying to say. Really nice detent. Just a really solid action. And of course, raised portions that uh, help protect it. And just for comparison, here's a little run. They sound totally different. And yeah, my videos are a little long, but it is about the details. Obviously, both of these tools, you can have uh, the belt clips on either side. The fuel with the belt clip here is pretty good, but the center of gravity is up a little higher. And some people may like this position. And to tell you the truth, I kind of like it. It's easy to grab, but it doesn't feel like it's... It feels like it's easier to knock off than when it's when a tool is hanging like this. I didn't want to point that out. And even though it does have an all-metal chuck, it does not have carbide inserts in the teeth like the, the big 20-volt models do. They are trying to meet some price points. Certainly is better. The DeWalt is only a 3 8 and it has a plastic outer collar. Definitely a pretty tight spindle on this Milwaukee. There's always going to be a, just a little bit of play in hammer drills just because the spindle, when you're in hammer mode, has to be able to shift back and forth. So that always gives it just a little bit of extra play. A single light in the front. It's not too bad. We do have a little bit of coil whine. You can just hear it there. Uh, a decent light. It would have been nice if they put two LEDs instead of one, just to give it a little more brightness. You know, they have these huge high-capacity batteries. Pretty stiff spring, but if you know Milwaukee Tools, it's actually been decades and decades of, and not all of it their fault, just tools used in dirty environments, but with sticky triggers. And so nowadays, they just put on, you know, really stiff triggers. Part of the issue with this drill and this configuration, the placement and the angle of the battery, it causes them to have to modify the grip quite a bit plus the way the controller is up here so it's really a front heavy drill and even the reason why it's angled I think is just so it will stand up on its own battery but it won't do that with a bit in it or any kind of a substantial bit 
the reverse lever is pretty mushy. It may be a little bit soft for some people in the DeWalt, but the DeWalt is very easy to operate. This is pretty easy to get it in the reverse, but to get forward, it's just you're just not in the right position. You actually have to release your grip and hit it with the tip of your finger or hit it with your knuckle and then re-grip the tool again to use. The DeWalt, because of the way the battery affords the ergonomics and having all the electronics in the handle, they are able to have a much better placement. The DeWalt is just really easy because the lever lines up with the knuckle, so you can hold on tight and you can just switch this in either direction. Super easy. Little stuff like this. See, these power, these types of tools are really competitive, and it isn't just a homeowner or do-it-yourselfer. It isn't uh, commercial HVAC installers who are using this stuff. It is, you know... Uh, all sorts of little manufacturers, factories. It's surprising the number of assembly operations and companies buy these tools just because they're so cost effective. And ergonomics end up making a big deal on how uh, how fatiguing the tool is, how tired you are, how you know tough it is with your grip. If we measure across the line all the way around with the soft tape, which I have done, what we have is about six and three quarter inches from the front of the trigger right to the back, just a cross line wrapped around in circumference. Where around here, it's six and a half inches. So it's a quarter inch less on the wall. And that would be once again, if we just wrapped around and did a measurement with the soft tape. Down here where your grip is the smallest, right around here, right at this line, a whopping six and a half inches of diameter and that's really uh, just makes it's the worst because this is your weakest finger and it's having to try to grip the largest diameter and you have less leverage at a half angle than you are when you're at a tighter angle and that really uses a lot more energy where obviously the DeWalt's much thinner this is going to be four and three quarter inches a huge distance so obviously the ergonomics and if you have smaller hands if you're not six feet if you're like less than six feet tall I just use see that about the break you know if you have shorter fingers or a smaller person you're really gonna end up liking the DeWalt unless you really need the power that's kind of the deal with the the Milwaukee is it's like they're trying they really are targeting these more for commercial users because they just have a huge variety of tools but they're willing to sacrifice just a, a break just all the ergonomics you know not just from the switch placement and this grip this type of vertical battery is difficult to deal with and part of the ergonomics is that it has a battery meter but it's in the tool and especially if you're a commercial outfit you know you have a bunch of these and a bunch of batteries and you're trying to find a battery that works and you're trying to pinch on this thing and yank it out get another battery put it in there see if it has charge it's freezing out and you forgot your gloves trying to pinch this thing in here and getting that in and out is going to be real frustrating real fast versus of course the good old pod battery which is just super easy i talk too much but it is about the details and to really impress upon the grip it'd probably be doing just this if we take and rotate them around like this it's just wow I mean, if Makita could change their line to go a slide battery, so can Milwaukee. And then they have an extremely competitive tool. Anyway, let's just do, do a few drilling tests. I'll maybe throw in some footage from that older uh, video or that video that I did a few uh, days ago about the Hercules auger bits just to show this really adds max and what it does when it stalls out. And we'll just see it right now just how much more powerful it seems to be over the DeWalt. I'm not going to do stall torque tests. I have a little torque meter, but that's uh, it's one thing drilling and then having it uh, slowly overload and trying to use a torque meter and just, you know, jamming the drill. I don't want to be that harsh to them. Here we are with the Hercules 1-inch auger bit, and this is a fresh charge. Uh, this should go right through this piece of uh, rough cut 2x4 Douglas fir. And it does that pretty well. I'll include some footage of like a DeWalt nail eater that I did in that previous video. Uh, that's a really hard to turn bit and it did stall it out. This is really right at the limit through dry lumber like this. Definitely won't drive something like this through hardwood. 
Here we are with the DCD701. I highly doubt that the DeWalt is going to do this. It would surprise me because that's was really right at the limits. The Milwaukee, they do have those six cell, four and six amp hour batteries. That will give the Milwaukee even more power because they'll have much less voltage drop and more amps because you have two sets in parallel. And that's one thing. I don't have one of those batteries. And so you should know that, that the Milwaukee can get even more powerful. I'm actually surprised the little DeWalt did that. But it was, you could hear in there, it was uh, just uh, within a nanosecond of cutting out, I'm sure. And why not? This is a three-quarter inch spade bit. A lot of people do review videos, but they kind of use small bits for what you're doing. We'll see if it can do this. 1700 RPM. This is a uh, Bauer self-feed spade bit, so maybe just a little bit more aggressive. Let's see if it can do that in second gear. No, that is just too much. This trigger is annoying. It, it just doesn't have a very good detent. So you get right here. You can see that it looks like it's all the way pushed in, but the trigger is still locked out. So you got to like really press it all the way over. We're going to try a three quarter inch, but this time it's not a self feed. So I can regulate the pressure a little bit. There we go. A less unfair bit. It'll drive a three-quarter inch spade just fine. It just won't drive one that's trying to screw itself it's through the wood at 20 miles an hour. But in the sake of fairness, I'll try the DeWalt with that same self-feed. By the way, that sound in high gear is just the one-way clutch where the chuck is over-speeding and kind of making a weird sound with that. I doubt, uh, let's see what the DeWalt or how quickly the DeWalt cuts out. About the same, and it's only 1500 RPM. And for the sake of consistency, I put that Erwin bit in just so we can do. Oh, and no, I'm not going to do a test of the hammer drill. I mean, thinking you're going to get some work done in, mason in masonry with a tool like this. I mean, I guess, you know, some HVAC guys would like it because the brick is pretty soft. And uh, you, but it's. Hammer drills just annoy me. They're super noisy, and little ones like this just have so little mass. All it does is just uh, chatter your teeth, and they're a little bit ridiculous. Um, you know, they have M12 roto hammers. This is just a three inch deck screw, and we'll just uh, do the second gear run in with that. If I can get it to bite. No problem. We could probably drive a four inch screw and that'd be about the limit. Pull that back out and set first gear. Nice. And of course, with the uh, DeWalt, that screw is hot. With the two amp batteries, both of these tools are closer than I expected, but Milwaukee is still definitely more powerful. I guess I should point out that the DeWalt sets did come with a two amp charger, where the Milwaukee is a three amp charger, but it's only a single voltage, where the DeWalts are dual voltage. And all DeWalt 20 volt chargers will charge 12 volt batteries, but they did have a few of their early 12 volt line, which did have 12 volt only. And of course, the Milwaukee did come with their, which is really nice, the super compact impact wrench. I believe the bigger difference, in the, at least with the set, is that the Milwaukee impact is not only going to be a bigger difference over the DeWalt impact as far as power, uh, but it has uh, better control of the modes because it has a four mode system. Anyway. I mean, if you're a contractor and you really are planning on buying into and getting a bunch of the Milwaukee 12-volt stuff, then that's really the big advantage. But if you're somebody who just wants to get a cordless drill or a drill impact, a little 12-volt drill impact set, and you're not going to be buying uh, just a whole bunch of the, you know, like big, they make big impact, half-inch impact wrenches and just all sorts of specialty tools, crimpers and cable cutters and the 12-volt line. But if you're not going to be getting into all that stuff, I have to recommend that the wall even a sacrifice of some power and maybe not the biggest batteries available. 
the ergonomics is really going to pay off in the long run. Uh, especially if you're a smaller person with smaller hands. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out. Thank you.